welcome, welcome, welcome to 2022, the future. Well, I guess if you're listening to this, it's the past. Yeah. Right? Because it would be, because we recorded well, it the, and then people are listening later. The Couple weird thing is, for, for us, we're talking to people in the future, but they're listening to people right. in the past. Exactly. So but for it's us, also our future. present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For us, it's the All future. All timelines happening at the same time. Right. For yeah. our listeners, it's the past. That's pretty pretty wild. And and why um, I think it's even more so the past for our listeners is because we're going back to 2021 for this episode, too. Yes. Uh, but before we get yes. into that, let's introduce ourselves. Hello, folks. You're listening to Servant Sonic, the music podcast. As always, I'm joined by my host, Hunter H. Dizzle Hamilton. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and Jake, uh, J0 2020, or J022, two two, sorry. You Swain? Yeah. Yes, That's and. That's right. Yeah. Yes, yes, and. yes, yes, and. Yes, and. Yes, and. It is. Yes, and. Yes, and. Yes, and, 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 and Swain um, the yes. Jock Bonson. Yes, and peanut Instagram. butter. Um, so <laughs> that's good. Improv. Is, uh, is a strong suit here for the show. And yes. I'm Lee, uh, the Sweezy Bader. Um, <laughs> guys, I've been I've been watching uh, the new episode of Queer Eye, and I yeah. have not oh, been able to get season. out of my head. Yeah, I have not been able to get out of my head. Uh, the latest episode that we just watched is um, this woman who owns a bakery in Austin, Texas, and it's called OMG Squee. OMG squee. Yeah. And there's a okay. squee stuck in my head all day. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, just in my mind. It's just squee. And I'm like, ah. So it feels so yeah. good. Hell yeah. I want to get one of the t shirts. Apparently they sell t shirts. Yeah, t-shirts. for sure. I want to try those macaroons too. Yeah, it looks look, wild. Look um, but, anyways, we can't be focused on things that are happening in 2022. <laughs> we have to be focused on things that happened in 2021. Right. What you are tuning into right now, folks, whether it be uh, on YouTube or uh, in podcast form and audio form. Uh, is our breakdown of what we think are the best albums of 2021. Now there is a little bit of a uh, of a hitch to that. The only albums that we are putting in our top 10 of the year of the past year are albums that we reviewed on the show. So that gives us uh, 28 albums that we can pick from a 28 album pool oh my. from the 25 yeah from the 25 episodes. Weird number because there were some fan review requests that we right, did, yep. and so that bumped up the the number a little bit. Um, all in all, we got uh, we got twenty eight albums in twenty five weeks that we get to choose from. So what you are getting, listener slash viewer, is our top ten albums that we reviewed this year. The absolute must listens, all of them must listens, but the absolute cream of the crop of twenty twenty one. That's right. The wrap up, the best of. Let's yeah, the go. Spotify wrapped. Yeah, this is yeah, you're, you're our. Getting... This is serve and Sonic wrapped, y'all. The, this the servify it. wrap. The surf. <laughs> the servified wrap. Yeah. You've that, been certified. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You've been. Yes, and we are on Spotify yeah. as well. So like, yeah, I, I, I see a collab in our future. Yeah, I mean, technically, we are collabing with Spotify because we we do our our distribution through Anchor. And they're oh, a Spotify yeah. right. company. So technically so, we are collabing. I could throw a Spotify verified. logo in our in our uh, <laughs> you know little thumbnail if really yeah. make it a thing, you know? Yeah. We could become a Spotify brand. A brand <laughs> yeah, official. We need the money. Yeah, and then we'll definitely yeah. get paid and become Yo. CEOs of Servify Spotify. That's the Servify whole reason X I Spotify. do this. That's why yeah, we're doing money. This. That's why, yeah. Because you guys promised worthy. me that I would get yeah. paid at some that's point. Why, that's why we do this is because of money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for we sure. Um, well, before we get uh, to um, wild ham and cheese into this, um, let's give the listeners slash viewers uh, a breakdown of the process that we are going to go into. Now, to be clear, viewers slash listener, We don't know the process. Uh, We just discussed for a little bit of time before we came on air here. We don't even really know if this process is going to work or not. And whether or not it makes sense. So 
if you don't understand, just know that you're not alone. <laughs> neither. <laughs> know that it's okay. This is our neither first time. Do. So yeah. bear with us here. So what we did, what we'll do first is we'll talk about the, the, the task that each one of us had in front of us, which only two of us actually did, which was to make a list of the top 25 albums that we reviewed. Um, of the two people that did that, uh, we tried to hash out what the top 25 albums would be comparing our lists. Didn't go so well. So we were like, hey, you want to know what? We all have a top 10 list. Why don't we go through the top 10 albums of the year? Try and find a consensus. And we'll use uh, the albums that all, that the majority of us have in their top 10 to 12 range to decide the ultimate Servant Sonic approved top 10 albums of 2021. There we go. So now we have a list of 12 artists and albums here that we want to lobby for positioning in this top 10 ranking. Um, and so this what, is sort of like a game of like family feud. Yeah. What you're listening yes. to is us <laughs> doing that now. <laughs> <It's> figuring <laughs> out what albums are going to be where out of this. Right. 12 but we will, we will also we have, have, yeah, we will also have some we'll have music, music. We'll have for music. you to enjoy. Yeah. We're yeah, always yeah, going to have yeah. music. You know, it's fine. We'll have music to break it up for you. <laughs> Musical to break up this mayhem. Feud, the servant Sonic wrap up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, first what we should get into is, uh, maybe some albums that didn't make the cut. So why don't you, why don't we kind of like pick a couple of those that didn't make the cut before we, we get too far into the other stuff here. The first two that I want to address, uh, Mm -hmm. and then if, if you guys want to chime in, feel free. Um, the first one for me is, uh, Silk Sonic. So Silk Sonic for me, on the year I ranked it 21. To, if I'm being quite honest, after a couple of months now that we've had Silk Sonic, because I guess it came out in November, now that we're a couple of months away from its release, the album represents to me a bit of a letdown, if I'm being super, super blunt. Um, on the review itself, it was a bite size, I think we did in, you know, 20th episode or something like that. And, uh, at the time I was really excited about it because, and I realize now because it was new Anderson pack, um, and I get excited for every Anderson pack release, but ultimately I felt the album was really short, um, and maybe was just super expected from what we ultimately got. Um, and I wish that there was some, yeah, maybe a little bit more, uh, a little bit more risk taking on the album than maybe there was. That being said, That's well I think, said. That is well said. That being mm. said, I think the highs on the album are absolutely soaring. The song with Thundercat uh, is a great example yeah. of that. I think any moment Bootsy Collins has on the album is fun and uh, a little tongue in cheek. And there's yeah, there's just some great great singles off that album too. Like Leave the Door Open continues to be one of my favorite songs of the year. I'd still listen to that track a lot. Um, so there are some great moments on the album for me though, not enough to get into the top 20 on my list. Do you guys have any, uh, any qualms with anything that anything that I just said, anything, anything that I just said there or, uh, yes. And yes, um, yes, I have a yes, qualm. And, uh, no, just, no, 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 no. I <laughs> just using yes. And to always argue. Yes, I do. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Um, no, I, 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 I totally agree. I gave that album a single listen through and kind of thought um, this is a bit one toned. Totally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it doesn't like the hope was that, you know, it would feature Anderson Pack's greatness and maybe give um, what's his name? Bruno Mars a boost a bit. Bruno, Bruno. A bit of a boost, but it kind of did the opposite. Like, yeah, it was very Bruno Marsy, and a bit too much. Really, I don't know. He's not. Yeah, my no, I, no, I get, I get that. I, I think that's exactly, exactly what it was. Is it? It catered yeah. maybe too much to the safety of Bruno Mars' career, and didn't right. go far enough into, like the weirdness of some of the areas of Anderson Pack's career. Um, right. It was kind of, co- it was kind of corny. 
Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. That being said, the music, it, like the music itself, I, I said this in the review as well. I mean, like, let's not get too too wild into it. I said this in the review as well. Is like the production is crisp, and whoever did like the mixing and mastering of that album, I'm sure it was tons of people that were like probably responsible for those stages of of the album, but. Like they sound so good. Like the yeah. like the keys and the bass and the strings all sound amazing. But that being said, if like the the production itself, if like the the music that you're playing isn't necessarily like the most engaging, like that wears off eventually, right? Like I'd rather listen to something grammier if it's something different, you know? Yeah. 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 Anyways, so that's that's the one for me. Um, Hunter, I know that you have a couple that you probably want to bring up well as well, so I'll let you take it away. Sure, yeah. Well, for one, I thought Mother Mother's uh, Inside, that was that that comes in at 16 on my list. I think that was just because throughout the year, a lot of maybe the stuff earlier that we listened to, um, slash, you know, maybe stuff that came out later towards, like, November, um, kind of just grew on me a bit more. I still thought... Mother Mother's ability to, you know, they called it inside, of course, it was all about writing from a perspective of just being, um, you know, in the midst of the pandemic, which is still, you know, inspiring for artists to create um, amongst that environment. And, you know, I'm a huge fan of Mother Mother recently, um, and but I just think that they have a lot more stronger songs um, earlier in their discography. So... I guess it's hard for me because a lot of the records that maybe I voted for, they maybe came at, to me in a time where maybe September, or November, early December, maybe around that time, I was either listening to records in the past that just really stood out for me, or mm. it was maybe like something from my favorite band, for example, like Mastodon comes out. And they kind of blow me away with that, where, where like I have to reevaluate my list and be like, oh, well, this isn't really a bad record yet, that this only ranked higher for me because maybe the due date um, or the date um, another album was released was right. better. So, you know, that's just like one album that I have that I was kind of like, I liked it at the time, but I only did kind of like one or two, three, three listens. And then I was like, OK, uh, right. time to go back to other stuff. Yeah, I think you raise a, a good point too there, Hunter, that like, in terms of like trying to rank yeah. albums, um, I feel like Timeline does have a lot to do with it. If we're ranking it based on like our personal preferences, like, yeah. similarly, I like Mother Mother's early discography, I was a huge fan of and was pleasantly surprised by this album uh being as good as it as it was but for whatever reason where it fell like i was already listening to other stuff yeah and so didn't really feel that compelled to 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 tune in um long term and that's sort of the th the thing with what we're doing by ranking these albums is it's like <laughs> this is very much like personal preference that it doesn't necessarily speak to like the overall I mean I think to some extent it does because that's like one of the things that we tried to focus on right is like what is the right. overall like quality of this album um, but you can only do that so much when it's just like three dids totally. um, and that's for me too like we were talking Hunter also said earlier that it's it's kind of uh, interesting that Donda didn't make anybody's top yeah. Top 10 or top 12 or whatever. I don't think top 12. Um, Not for me. And we have, but like we, we had like two episodes at least. Like one we and talked a, about one and a half for sure. And then yeah. like it probably trickled into other shit too, for sure. And it was like Donda and, and uh, uh, Certified Lover Boy. Yeah. Now that, 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 and that didn't crack the top ten boys. No, no certified. No, yeah, boys. exactly. No. That's that's not that's not on any of our lists. And I think that has more that has less to do with like timeline and more to do with like so many other very public, uh, right, uh, problems or I don't know, like just the shit surrounding the, the album. Yeah, like the conversation, mm -hmm. the the mm -hmm. public discourse about these artists right now and that like 
regardless of how much we listen to some of these tracks, it's just it's overshadowed by the controversy of the of the people involved. Yeah. Um, and their performances or or whatever the politics and stuff. Well, let so. me and let me ask you this question also. Would you feel as though maybe um cuz a lot of these um these releases were either, you know, via Bandcamp or a smaller label, do you right. both feel that maybe your 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 ears were looking for kind of more newer sounds than maybe the artists that you were like listening to long periods of time or is that just something where you like we're all music fans of course that you guys like to delve deeper into maybe the more underground stuff i guess uh what what do you what do you say around maybe stuff like that uh well okay so i'll, I'll say for for the purpose of the show yes mm. i like to try and find stuff that is of maybe course yeah not as you know front and center in in the music industry yeah um that's that's a, that's the point of the show, really, right? Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That that we we're kind of striving to achieve here is like a show that introduces people to to new music, and mm -hmm. um, hopefully, hopefully, a, a big chunk of that comes from a bunch of cool Canadian artists that um, you know are unheard of. Um, that being said, Jake's absolutely right. We've done two <laughs> shows dedicated yeah. to Kanye and Drake, so like it's fucking and and uh, fucking Fast Ten. <laughs> fast and curious <laughs> or whatever. So, so in is, terms of being underground, which is arguably our best, arguably yeah. our best episode. Well, I, I'll push <laughs> yeah. back. Our best episode, our best episode is the abstract mind state episode. That, like, to me, like that is with beyond a shadow of a doubt, and it's because it's because it has the least amount. There. Yeah, because it has the least amount there. of us talking. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else talking, yeah, 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 and they're yeah, actually yeah, yeah. genuinely interesting. Um, but uh, but no, like I like <laughs> I, I think like for the show we strive to bring new artists to the yeah to the center stage, which is something I really like about our show and something I I think people really appreciate about it as well is getting to hear these new artists and and from each other too, right? It's not just like the listeners. Like I learn a lot from the artists you guys bring, and likewise. Uh, and it, 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 you know, expands what I'm listening to, which is cool. Um, but the, uh, in terms of like album of the year, like how we've set up this list, I guess it doesn't like lend itself to dismissing that really. Right. Cause like, we're like not focusing on like who everyone thinks is the album of the year. It's like the, of the albums that we reviewed, what do you, we think is the best album that we've listened to all together. Right. Or yeah, like, right pieces of or talked about this album altogether. Um, so yeah, like of that sample size, of course, like it's, it's going to be maybe a little bit more abstract than some of the other like reviews out there online and stuff like that. But I think we have done a really good job of like highlighting how some of those underground artists or like new and upcoming artists are actually really influential and do actually belong on some of those top lists or are currently Definitely. on some of those top lists in some of these cases with these artists that we're going to be getting into. Sure. Um, and that's also an awesome mark too, right? Like, it's not like, like, you know, I, I have, <laughs> I've said it before. Like I have like a strong affinity for everything Kanye as far as his music goes, but Donda does not belong in my opinion in an album of the year, it, it, at least top 10 list. And I think like, I know obviously he's in there for the Grammys yeah. and I'm not sure if he's been put in like other lists elsewhere. I'm sure he has, but, uh, but in the case of Donda specifically, if we want to just talk about that album, there's reasons for other albums being there or not as well. But for Donda itself, it is impossible to ignore those things that came with it. Um, and sh and right. also it shouldn't be ignored. So like, uh, I, yeah. I, yeah. I've had that conversation millions of times. It feels like with Jake, I think with you as well, Hunter, where it's mm. been like, can you separate like the art from the artists and like the, like, Very you know, true. all like the controversy and shit like that. And I guess that's a personal decision, personal choice. But in this case, it is so intertwined with this specific release that it does hold it back. And, uh, and yeah. it's going to be it's going to be costing its serving its servified status, um, which is huge, which this year. Hopefully Gigantic. he'll take into consideration for future. Oh my goodness! Oh, definitely. If, yeah, if this doesn't, if this doesn't change, plus we've got his, Whoa. we've got his absolute 
best friends, Abstract Mind State, on the show, and, and they <laughs> oh, know yeah. we got their ear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So we've spent enough time on the on the ones that didn't make it, um, which is which is fine. Uh, let's talk about the folks who did. So can we can we hook up a track really quick? Just like yes. a quick. Right, right after I just go through this, I have yeah, a yeah. track to play right away. So okay, great, in, yeah. in no specific order, these are the ones that we Ooh, have decided okay. are at minimum the top 12 albums of 2021. In no specific order. In no yet. specific order, but you can maybe listen to this order, listeners, and get an idea of what I think. But yeah, you time. shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, 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 right, you right, shouldn't but yeah. don't. But don't. But you could. <laughs> um, okay, so we have Mustafa's When Smoke Rises, Motorbike James, Visions, Bad Bad Not Good, Talk Memory, Abstract Mind State, Dreams Still Inspire, uh, Charlotte Day Wilson, Alpha, uh, Japanese Breakfast, Jubilee, Benny Sings, Music, Pax, Take the Cake, uh, The Muslims, Fuck These Fascists, uh, Serpent with Feet, Deacon, Childs, uh, Hope for Sale, and Unto Others, Strength. Uh, so those are the 12 candidates to make the top 10. Who will be crowned champion? I don't know. But let's listen to Unto Others first with Summer Lightning. Shall we? Let's go. Let's go. Let's do let's it. Go. Yes, and.
you go. There a you banger. go. A, a classic. Banger. And, you know Hunter's going to like that one. So oh. that's uh, that's Unto Others Strength. And if you haven't listened uh, listened to the episode before this one, I think released uh, I think we released it on the 30th of I last so, yeah. year. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, go listen to it. It's great. Um, Hunter, you said in that review, you said um, that you hear a little bit of The Cure. Well, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. You, there's a lot of The Cure in there, uh, <laughs> especially sure. this yeah, song. Yeah, sure. Like, especially this song, because like you hear like the keys coming in on uh, different parts of the song. And, you know, obviously the cowbell takes like a big. Yeah. Um, kind of takes a big moment there, too, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, so let's let's Not talk enough. about. Exactly. Let's talk about this. So, Hunter, I want you to lobby. Well, I guess before, maybe before we get into like one specific artist, we should talk about one question first because it might give a little bit of context to what we're saying. Okay. So, one question that we wanted to ask during this episode was, what do you look for in an album of the year? Like, what do you look for in the end of year, like mm. top album? Like, what are some, some of the pieces well, of criteria you look for? I guess for my, okay, well, I guess for myself, the simplest answer I can give you is how long I've been listening to an album on repeat where it just never seems boring to me. Right. And this album really did it for me. I mean, it's got, you know, it's got like that hard feedback beginning with heroin, yet I that, that guitar part there, like that little kind of squeaky little guitar part after that spoken gothic intro where it sounds like he's singing it he's singing it into a cave or like a deep church. I don't know. I love that. But that was that part was stuck in my head for the longest time. And then you get mm. like of course the vocal hooks. Um but you know, I also look for like production elements. Um another I think uh, another album of the year that I really enjoyed that hope to feature on the show. Um spoilers ahead, but Random Access Memories by Daft Punk. Mm. Um, mm. Just the star, the star power of that album. First of all, Nile Rodgers, um, Pharrell, uh, Paul Williams. You had you had a bunch of people on that album that had like a lot of pedigree to them. Yet it was the musicality of Daft Punk with, with using strings and like long arrangements and stuff like that, where it was that good. Like you know, production wise, that like it really just captured. I just thought it was everything. So I guess right. it's like this mix of great production elements, but I guess the simplest answer for myself is how often on repeat do I have it? And Unto Others, that album, I've played it almost every day uh, as soon as I heard it. I think I listened to it in late October, and mm. uh, I hadn't stopped. Like I was on the train listening to it. Uh, back, uh, it's 11 o'clock at night. I'm listening to it. So, and the full thing too, like the full album. So like that, back, at least yeah. for me, yeah, front to yeah. back. So Cause that's the, cause why the, it is my number one. Cause the other, the other thing for this album too, cause like the, the you know, the one thing you can say is like, oh, recency bias, but you just said it right there. Even though yeah. you did a review on it in late December, um, yeah. or I guess mid December. Um, but we posted it late December. Um, it had been out for a couple of months, so this is a review. Yes. yes. Yeah. So it's not maybe as while. recent as some of the other stuff we've we've actually Very done. Very true. Very so true. so it actually that staying power is maybe a little bit easier to assess than if it came out in December. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, but yeah. What about anything like for you, Jake? Is there anything like you would add on to that or change at all in terms of um, what I think about for album of the year choice? Yeah, like how do you? What helps you decide what that is? What do you look for in an album? Yeah, I think for me it's a, it's 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 pretty personal. Um, like I think a lot about, or like I like to listen to stuff that I think has some sort of comment on what's happening in the world. Mm, right. Um, I think production quality obviously big. Like lyricism has always been really yeah big for me. Um, I think there's another thing it's it's um I want to say almost like world building like there are some mm. albums that we've reviewed that draw you in and it's like it's like they're they're writing from this place that is like its own little contained universe mm-hmm. and you get to kind of be a part of it um you know for example like 
this is sort of like a dated example, but like Neon Bible mm. uh, mm-hmm. from Arcade Fire is like my favorite Arcade Fire album. It's one of their like critically sort of most, uh, I guess, disliked, I think. Yeah. It's shat on. Even though it's, it's shat. It, it's, it's so It's shat album. on a bit. It's no, yeah, it's yeah. no everything now. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, it's shadow on a little bit. Like compared to suburbs and shit, it definitely doesn't. Yeah, exactly, look the same. exactly. But yeah. but I think that the, the real magic in in an album like that is that it's it's like this whole universe that you get to enter into for sure. Um, yep. And so that plays a big part. Is like you know I think about the full album. Like what does the album in yeah. its entirety feel like? Right. Um, and so that's why my number one choice is what it is, um, right. which I won't spoil. Yeah, we'll get there. Quite, we'll get there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we we know what's in the top twelve, so we we we, you know, we're hanging around. But okay, so I, I agree, like you know, pretty much pretty much wholesale with what you guys have already said. Uh, the only thing I would um, I would maybe add is, uh, I guess, kind of like something that you you both have already said, but like, am I listening to it a bunch? And Mm. again, this is a really personal one, but like, am I listening to it a bunch? And is it like the soundtrack to certain memories that I have from that past? Yeah, true. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So it's not just necessarily like the emotion that it conveys or it's it's not necessarily like the uh, like it's not even anything like that. It's just like, for instance, when I think of Benny Sings, I mean, saw him live. So I think about that first. But the other things I think of are like summertime. And like finally getting let out of lockdown, I was like cranking yeah. Benny Sings and having a great fucking time with Benny Sings. So like on the right. patios and doing stuff. So um, like that's that's one obviously very you know not specific example that I offered, but it's that sort of sort of thing that uh, helps me decide what my favorite albums of the year tend to be as well. So listener, if that didn't absolutely put. Uh, with it, with a dotted eye, <laughs> uh, an understanding of what the fuck's going on here. Um, but uh, yeah, so we just listened to Unto Others. Now, the reason I picked Unto, uh, Unto Others to play first is because, Hunter, you just said Unto Others for you was the album of the year this year. Yes, I will stick to my guns. Yes. Why? Why is it? Like okay. two words. Well, <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, it it is. <laughs> yes, and. Yes, and. <laughs> Yes, Sand, it's got it's got your thrashy hooks. It's got your gothic uh, gothic rock influence. It's got uh, cool music videos of guys playing uh, instruments in a haunted church. Um, it's got so many references. You got Typo Negative, which also is a great band, The Cure. So there's all these influences melding together to give you this right. danceable, danceable. Heavy, like like a heavy metal mix mash goth rock clay person that I think can open up. You know, like I guess the amount of people that were coming up to me and saying, "I hear this, I Wait, hear did, that." Did you say? Did, did did you say clay person? Yeah, like you mix clay all these genres people, and you make a clay, clay person. <laughs> you make a gothy clay person out of all oh, these. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, okay. textures. Oh, like yeah, my, being my buddy very, clay. <laughs> like Lee's yeah. buddy Clay, yes, and to Lee's buddy Clay, yeah, he's a person. And you mix yeah. all these mashes and genres. And oh, and I guess people. my only my my only point that I was going to say is that yeah, uh, like the amount of people that were coming up to me and hearing all these different um, artists, I think that's what connected me the most to be like, wow, this is like a really good starting band. Maybe to like people that maybe want to get into maybe a more heavy metal side, maybe want to explore goth right. a bit more. And just the catchiness. Cool. Come on, the catchiness is one of the great like. It's certainly there's catchy. There's so many catchable I, hooks. Yeah, I 100 percent. That you're agree singing with that. out loud. Yeah, yeah. That you're singing out loud in the shower. No, I, you're singing out loud in the train. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I'm with you, man. I'm with you on on definitely, definitely like a lot of what you said. I 100 percent agree with. Um, yeah, I, I think like as far as like metal goes, this is like one of the least metal albums. Like what you call it metal, yeah. I mean? Like there's elements of yeah, metal, like it's, but it's, it's tough to completely. it's tough to say. Yeah, it's tough to say. And I, I wouldn't say like if I was showing this to someone, I don't think they would be like, "Ugh, I don't like metal." If they were like not yeah. into metal, like I think they would just be like, "Oh yeah, it's like a hard rock band," and sometimes they veer towards that heavier side. 
Exactly. Yeah. Which is cool. So, and I like some of my favorite albums are ones that like aren't genre specific. Um, Definitely. That's, but, that's me as well. Yeah. So, so you have them at number one. For me, I had them at my number 11 spot on my list. I know Jake didn't have them in his, in his top 10. You have For convinced not- me though that they belong in my top 10. So Ooh, let's go. I'm willing, yes. I'm willing to kick yes. out. I'm willing to kick out one of my, my, my duders here. Um, well, and also it was one of my favorite of, of your reviews on, on the year. It was just, uh, it oh. Was, oh, thank you. It was well done. It was, uh, it was a good one. As I said, folks, go listen to that if you haven't yet. Um, but yes. Okay. So we have unto others. The, the claim has, or sorry, this claim has been staked. The stake claim has been staked. The, state, the claim, the claim <laughs> the has, stake been has been claimed. The stake has been claimed. The stake has been claimed. Yes, right. You you stake your let claim. I don't just, know. And, and let you me see, just you also do stake your claim. You do stake your yeah. claim. Yeah. That yeah. So the claim Jake has been saying. staked. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The claim <laughs> has been staked. Sirloin. Let me let me also clarify <laughs> that what Jake was saying about concept albums that I also uh, agree with as well. And forgive that me. Applies I know here. I'm gonna probably yeah. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher it, but I think it was one of your spicy staples, Jake, that it's Owen last name I forget. I'm gonna Owen Palette. Owen Pallet. Thank yeah. you. Owen Pallet. Yeah, that, that concept Heartland. album. Which Heartland was, yes. was the review. Very, and very good. Totally. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah, have to agree totally. with you. Owen that if there's, if, for sure. if there's a, a concept album that kind of links all these things in a story, like To Pimp a Butterfly, first time I heard Kendrick, instantly right. fell in love, concept record, right? It's a story. So I just wanted right. to also, that is something that uh, I forgot to mention that, yeah, if it's a concept album, I'm all for that. Right. But yeah, the claim has been staked. Right. Totally. Nice. Okay, so we know we know that this is going to get a big vote from from Hunter. I'm willing to put that in the top ten. Jake is uh, is going to be the uh, the stickler there. So we'll have to figure that out. Well, We're going to have to I, figure I that out. Said, I haven't said. I haven't said. Yeah. What do you think? Um, yeah. Let me just, maybe I'm let speaking me just for look you. Look at here. my top ten. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I've made up my mind. No. Yeah, yeah, and no. no. He says into the mic filter. <laughs> um, pressing of an ear. No, yeah. I actually am down. I'm down to put it in the in the top list. I don't know who we're going to kick out. Yeah, it's oh going to be a joy. This is going to be a joy. This is going to be a joy. I have my candidate who I think needs to be kicked out, but you guys aren't going to like it. Say it. So Ooh, why don't we go to them next? Why don't we go to them next? Okay. So okay, we're, okay. Saying, we're, saying, we're saying together. We're saying together as a, as a group that... Uh, I have a my colored pencil here or pen here, and I have to figure out what color nice. means good, because uh, <laughs> green is completely done. The the ink has gone on it. Okay, well red okay. is bad. Red is bad, no obviously. Bad. But black is done too. So, so what other colors mm. are there other than red? Well, I'm writing with blue, blue so it has to be black. red for good. Uh, well, actually, red should be up. like the no. Well, well, if you know is, anything from great. Queer Eye. This is also if you pay right. attention to Queer Eye at all, it's that red yep. causes stress and it does. aggravation. It does. I just watched that. Yeah. Episode. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, good news is, and this is great for our audio only listeners because they're just getting nothing but joy out of us talking about a pen that they can't see. Um, yep. <laughs> they're going to love this one even more. My six sided. There wow, it is. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so green, 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 green. Yeah, let's get green on there. Okay, so green under good. Yeah, you're getting a big old green circle, bud. Okay, next one. Next one. And you guys aren't going to like it. This is one for me that is not in my top 10. So this is going to be on you not guys. Not in the top 10. Okay. Um, not to, on the top to, 10 for me. To it defend. is It is for you guys. So it's going to be on you guys to tell me like why I'm such a stupid, dumb idiot. And that is... Not hard. <laughs> yes, and. Uh, <laughs> and that is Child's Hope for Sale. Oh shit! Why should Hope for Sale okay. be in the top ten of the of the year? Um, Jake, you go first. This is your review. As like in, in, I just to get it straight. It's just why in general it should be in the top ten. Sure, right. Or, it's or, not or, in contrast to. Yeah, it's not in contrast to anything in particular. I guess it's just saying this is why, for sure, with a bullet, this is a top ten. You know what I mean? Like, Here, here's my if thing: you feel is strongly. Out. If you don't, then this makes it easy, I guess. My thing is, they were number nine for me, mm. but I do okay. actually think that they're 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 better. Um, and I think uh, part of it is just like 
it's the same reason we love like Kay Trinata, mm. um, the same reason we love uh, like I don't think we've ever featured them on the show, but I know Lee, you're a big fan of like Men I Trust. Mm. Um, is there's a groove? Oh, you're wearing. Oh, you are. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're wearing the shirt. Yeah. Um, yes, audio groove. listener. Let's uh, let's explain what just happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on yeah. The visual for you. Lee is wearing the what is that album? Is it Fink? Is that what it's uh, called? Fink. Yeah. Right. Finkel. Finkel something. Uh, you go ahead. You go ahead. I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's Anyways, a groove to be found with Child. Yeah. Not to mention, um, technically, their name is Child, Child, um, which is the best. That is awesome. Yeah. There's a groove to be found. It's intimate. It's got vibes. Um, it is very Fine much like, although it's not necessarily their their music isn't like concept heavy. I think mm-hmm. in the same way that K Trinata, like once you start a K Trinata album, it's hard to lit sort of listen to other stuff after, at least for me, mm. um, because you just get into the too groovy. It's so groovy. Those bass lines are so just, totally too just much slap. bounce. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think Child is just a great like when I think about. And somebody said this before we started recording the future of Canadian music. Mm-hmm. I think Child's it for you. Child's it for you. Wow. Child's well, it, Child's an yeah. example. It's an example, example of, of yes, yeah. yes. Okay, okay, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If I mean, I well may. said. Also, uh, Men I Trust album, Uncle Jazz. Uncle Jazz. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anyway, go ahead, Hunter. I don't know yeah. where I got um, Fink. I don't know where I got Fink. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If I may, I mean, I think uh, well, I liked what Jake was saying. I guess the thing that just really stood out for me is it's a vibe for sure. It vibes crazy. It's really good. It just, but also like, I, there's like, there's a lot of like that cool like, atmosphere and echoous echoousness that child has, and like it fills kind of all those. Cra- it's got like yeah. this this very like mystifying, groove laden, just like feel good music, and so that's why I have mm-hmm. it in yeah. my number three. If I had to, to give it a number three, number oh, three, Hunter, you are creating it is issues. my number three. Um, so number three. Yeah. Okay. So Hunter's really the one. Um, I guess that, I'm the one with the big, higher up big stake, stake to this claim, <laughs> a big claim on this stake. Yeah. 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 A T-bone. Um, yeah. And that T-bone. Um, Jesus Lord. <laughs> this is going to be hard. <laughs> Okay, um, this is what so, I was worried about. I but no, I, I just I, I just want to say I just want to say we knew the bed we were making. We knew maybe the this bed is we a two parter. Eh? We have to do a part one and two, depending. I, on I the hope to God not. Um, so <laughs> I, I will not allow it. Okay, so we know we know that child is low on Jake's list, but he's saying he's willing to push it up. And Hunter, you have it high on your list. <laughs> Yeah. What I'm going to do now I'm is willing, say I'm, I'm not I'm willing, willing. What I'm what I what I am is I'm not willing to give up my child spot. For, oh, you're saying child needs to be there. Oh, okay. Yeah, child's I'm saying I'm there. saying. Okay, so yeah. let's do let's do the vote. Hey, we said we were going to do the vote. So all in mm. favor of child being in the top ten, raise your hand. Say aye. Aye. I'm going to say aye to that. Yeah. Aye. Two eyes. Two eyes Two and an idiot. Two eyes and an idiot. I'm out. Child, <laughs> let me just get my green here. You're getting circled, Boom. bud. Boom. Boom. Child in the top ten. Okay, so we got two do top we have some? Do we have some child on the playlist? Uh, we the okay, we can't do that for every goddamn artist. <laughs> but, like, we've uh, just talked about child for, like, so long. We're going to do that every artist. Uh, yes, we do have child. It's... Uh, Hold hold on till we get there. Should we just do it? Let's go. Let's just do Let's it. Should we just do okay. it? Here's hold on till we get there, but child. <laughs>
Okay. Um, child. Go. Child. Sorry. As um, I, uh, I is, had, um, is in there. I had, I had sushi with a friend, and you know, after when, uh, when you have sushi at the end, you can get like ice cream as like your dessert. Mm-hmm. And yeah. she oh, said, yeah, like red um, bean. Yeah, or like mango or something like that. And she said, yeah. um, you know, it fills in all the cracks, and that's how I describe this album. It fills in all the cracks. That's uh, it's like a mango ice cream after a full sushi dinner. Nice. So also, my analogy. Un- lovely. Unrelated, but sort of related. Sushi with a friend yeah. is a great band name for any. That is trying to good. start a band out there. We just hooked you up. Sushi with sushi with a sushi friend. With friend. Yeah. Sushi with friend. Um, there you go. That's hardcore. Okay, awesome. So the next one for me, and this is where we got to start. We got to start kicking some folks out. Two two folks to be exact. We got to kick fair out. Fair enough. Fair enough. And Jake is probably going to be unhappy with this one, um, but for me, this ranks number ten for my albums of the year. So this is the teeter one. I've let in child. I've let in unto others. So my ten is. For me, the one I could see going, I know Jake, you're not gonna be thrilled about this, Hunter, that you're gonna be the you're gonna be the the teeterer here. Okay. Serpent with feet deacon. Serpent mm. with feet deacon. Okay, wow. Um yeah, is yeah. for me number ten. If we're letting in child, if I'm letting in unto others, I could see Serpent with Feet being the one that falls out for me. Um but mm-hmm. Jake, what do you have to say? Um, I I don't know. I think Serpent with Feet is like one of those artists that I is an artist in 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 the truest sense. Like his music, um, is so specific, so personal. Uh, it's it's you know although it's poppy, it's got a lot of R and B vibes. It bucks a lot of the kind of mainstream trends or tropes in terms of like lyrical content but also like production like what you hear on the album is quite different um deacon itself is i mean it's full of like great features like how could this not be (laughs) in the top 10 albums of the year you guys how could it not and don't tell me don't tell me that it's because don't tell me that it's because you haven't listened to it because i have I know you've listened to it on repeat. Well. I've listened yeah. to Same Size Shoe. Yeah. I listened Fellowship? to it. I listened to it two days ago as I made an IKEA dresser. And <laughs> I didn't get angry once. Not once <laughs> was I angry. So pretty special. Pretty special album. Hunter, tell me things oh, about no. Deacon. Well, I think it's got it's it's vocal of of it's 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 a very like you know very personal. Again, the production is very good. <laughs> Features so timid. Very good. Um, well, I guess we have to establish. There's, there's a message does Hunter, to say. Does, it, does Hunter yeah, actually right. feel that it deserves less of a spot than well than other albums, or is it just sort of an oversight? Well, no. This is the question, Hunter. Where did you rank Serpent with Feet? It's uh, it's not in my top ten, guys. It's uh, it's not in his top ten. It's, That's it's, uh, the thing here. Y- yeah, it yeah. was in our top ten, Jake and I. Jake, yeah, I'm assuming right. you have it higher so, than ten, though. For me, it's it's not really. Yeah, good. it's my number six. Okay, well, this is what it's going to come down to. What number did you have it at, Hunter? I had that. That was my. Uh, and I'm sorry. <laughs> It's my last one. It's my twenty sixth one. Oh, I'm really sorry. Wow. I'm really, I'm really sorry. Wow, I'm just devastating. Really sorry, I'm really sorry. It's really, it's yeah. really devastating because that's a direct comment on how you feel about Jake. No, it's yeah. not. I love and you, Jake. I'm sorry. Yes, no, and. no, no, it's fine. It's fine. No, yes, and yes, uh, and. You're not no, going to no, like no. where No, it's well, not. It's not a direct be comment <laughs> because because I have other albums that we both agree on and Yeah. Yes, and right. we But this one's deeply you know, personal. You taste. said so yourself. Well, I think I think well, <laughs> I let felt me really clarify. Bad. I hate this. I feel really bad. <laughs> the nature of Serpent with Feet's music is really personal to right. him. To you, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Hold on. 
What if I change my list? I, I, here, here's no, the, you're not the, changing what, now, what, Hunter. <laughs> what is this up against? Not, what is not a chance. Up against? That's what is true. It, what is problem with you up against? Eleven other albums. Like, that's the thing. Maybe we put that to eleven the side, other albums. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trusty uh, multicolor pen here, purple. Yellow. That's pretty. Purple. That's pretty neutral okay. color. Okay. I'm going to take that purple. I'm going to put a line beside it, thinking like, hmm, up for debate, this one. Because, yes, yeah, so we still have to, like, finalize everything, right? So Yeah, exactly, 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 exactly. Let's not get, let's not get too, too wild. So we know Hunter hates this album, uh, and <laughs> Jake has had a frown ever since. <laughs> um, okay, next album that I would like to talk about, uh, The Muslims. Fuck these fascists. Ooh. Jake, you were... You were the one that brought this album actually to us as well. Talk a little mm-hmm. bit about the Muslims. Why do they deserve a top ten spot for the year? Um, I think w- what did I say about album of the year? Is one of the things I said I think is what it, how it reflects uh, sort of the larger conversation, the larger s- social commentary, and. Uh, and the album is actually called Fuck These Fucking Fascists. Right. Is an it? important distinction. I thought it, it was is, just yeah. Fuck These Fascists. No, it's Fuck These Fucking Fascists. Oh. And um, I feel this? like this album, more than any other, was a... It was, it was a great, uh, loud, angry, uh, kind of primal scream at... Mm-hmm. The world that we're living in right now. Yeah. And the world in which, you know, the institutions that are meant to protect our best interests have abandoned us and betrayed us. And, uh, and you know, for me, listening to this album makes me feel better mm. about just the fact that that's the world that we live in. Right. Um, to know that there are other people out there that feel the way that I do with songs like Crotch Papa Cop. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think that absolutely. And not to mention that this is a, you know, a punk band that is really reclaiming, I think, the, the core ideology that is punk music. Um, and in a way that's really kind of progressive and um, I just think it's an important album, you know, I think more so than, than some of the other albums that we've, we've reviewed on the show. This is, this one is important. Mm. Also, I um, I checked, um, I checked to clarify. Yes, it is indeed. Fuck these fucking fascists. And also they Google, Google got me real quick. They were like, yeah, it is um, actually. Yes. The band wins. The band wins for um, song titles. My favorite being John McCain's Ghost Sneaks into the White House and Teabags the President. So, right. Still yeah. like that one, and eh? Like, yeah. Incredible. So, yeah. like, well, yeah. like what uh, what Jake was saying, um, I, all I can say is agree in the terms of I think that's, like, the most primal, visceral punk rock music I've heard in, like, that mm. – in a very unpolished way, but that's what I love about it. Like the drums, like crash, like they punch you in the that's face. Its, you know what I that's mean? That's its appeal. So, yeah. yeah, like I just, it's, it's, yeah. I just like dirty production. Like I think it's just really good. Okay, so I'm the one. You, you two both have this in your top ten. Where does it rank for each of you? I have it actually. This seven. one's my number ten. That's your number ten. Okay, and and you have that that's at my number, number seven, ten. Hunter. I have that as number seven for my top ten. Okay, so and it, and I have it listed here as my number fifteen. So, you know, okay. give or take, that's that's roughly <laughs> ten. Um, if you if you pull all those together, um, <clears throat> or eleven ish. So, so just another purple line, or what? So yeah, I'm gonna purple line <laughs> oh, no. that one for now uh, because we're kind of fucked oh, here. Man. Um, oh, and uh, okay, and then we're gonna get into the next one here, uh, and the next one we'll play a song. Uh, as well, just to kind of keep shit moving. Um, yeah, actually, no pun intended there, but major pun. Um, <laughs> the next one is Charlotte Day Wilson. So Charlotte Day Wilson is one that I think I brought. Or was it you, Jake? 
No, that was you. I brought that. Okay, that was so, you. But I, I was know jealous you're, that you got to that one. I know you're a big fan of it too. Toronto's Charlotte Day Wilson. She came out with the album Alpha this year. I think in the summer at some time. I want to say like July, maybe that June. Probably right. Something yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, this album for me was one of my favorite albums of the year. Um, I still listen to this album a shit ton. Um, okay. And so for me, it was my third third on my list of the of the 25 I did here. Um, three big things about the album I really like. One, uh, I like the production. I think like the R&B slash like soul influence throughout this album is like awesome. It's everywhere. Um, and I think the production is really crisp. I really like a lot of the bass um, riffs and, and lines on this album. I really like the kind of understated quieter like keys and uh and um guitar as well um second thing i like about this album mountains which is off of this album was uh sampled in certified lover boy and it is by far and away the best thing about certified lover boys so uh she's the best part of two separate albums with one album and uh the last thing she's canadian and i think that's also sweet um i think she's like maybe the most Canadian on this list in a weird way, because her cousin is also like the CEO of like OVO, which is like Drake's company or whatever. Um, so it's just funny. She's like so deeply like herself is so her family is so deeply rooted in like what Canadian music is now that she really represents Canadian music on a global scale in, in a lot of ways too. Um, so Maybe she's not the most Canadian, but you get what I'm trying to say, uh, that she's just got like an interesting sort of, uh, yeah, sort of position in, in music right now in Canada. Yeah, I, I think the other thing with Charlotte Day Wilson is uh, it's not just straight well, no, no, ahead. Char, 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 you know, totally. it's like yeah. she's she's doing something a little bit more. It's like elevated pop, um, soulful. Well, oh, did you hear that? Or? I don't, I don't so know how you sort of Char stopped. would feel about that. Well, <laughs> well, yes, and yes, and there um, you go. Yes, yeah. and yes, yes and text. no, I disagree. Yeah, yes, and the opposite of what I feel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, like, and also like the bad, bad, not good feature on this album, like, totally. oh, sounds yeah. a great feature. It's honestly. like jazzy, yeah, you know. But yeah. her sound is like jazzy. It's like soulful. It's like R and B. It's, yeah. it's um, and like her, even just her voice, like her vocals, a little bit better than Beyonce. Or, yes, better than well, Beyonce. Well, you don't have to. Better than Beyonce. Beyonce but yes, it's, it's great. It's great. It's great. Yeah. It's very good. Yes, and no, I disagree. But um. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 just not even so the same ballpark, you know. Like uh, this isn't yes, this like Charlotte Day Wilson is just not just like pop music, you know. And this right. album, it's like R&B just showcases, I think, um, good quality Canadian like R and B. Right. I think is what I would like. Maybe. You look at where you look at where R and B is right now, and it's like so intertwined with Canadian. Like it's There's like a lot, the biggest yeah. R and B artist in the world right now is is the weekend, probably. Mm. Yeah, right. That's yeah. true. And that's a good point. then you look at all these like R and B artists that or or people who are on the periphery of that are like hanging around there. Obviously you got Charlotte Day Wilson, but we talk about Mustafa who's on this list as well. You think about Justin Bieber, you think about Daniel Caesar, like there there are just a bunch of these like Canadian artists that are really um really dominating that genre in different ways, different parts of it. Not everyone's like at the top of the charts, like the weekend or Justin Bieber, but you know what I mean? Um, and it's exciting. And, and like, you know, Toronto is obviously the hub for that of a lot of those artists. Um, but it's, it's throughout the country. There's like artists like that. So, um, anyways, yes, fully, fully on board with like Charlotte day Wilson, but in the spirit of what this song is trying to talk about, but also we need to keep it going as well. Let's listen to Charlotte Day Wilson's Keep Moving. All right? Uh, Let's go.
The wind embraces you in ways I wish I could Around the bend and up your thigh I would Oh, the time comes, the time it always comes too soon I wish that I could slow it down with you I wish that I could focus the end Just trying to navigate your skin and bones Trying to find my way, way back home mm. two-hour episode let's try and keep it moving thanks for the help with that charlotte day wilson so i'm giving charlotte day wilson a big old green circle hunter what say you he's muted so this is perfect <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> sorry <laughs> so unto others was you know I, I i'm happy that that one made the list so i'm 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 totally fine with putting charlotte Davis. oh you're feeling great now yeah you're like hey I'm look great. unto you others made it the, let's throw this in yeah yeah that, uh, that was the only one that i was really gonna fight for so you know what um i'm i'm totally down with charlotte being in that in that list wow incredible okay the next one we're gonna bring up then is uh a crowd favorite around these parts abstract mind state 
Jake, oh, yeah. Yo. Talk, to, talk to me about Abstract Mind State because you were there. You were you were a part of that episode where we got to talk to these two incredible artists. Let the friends awesome know. Awesome rappers. Let the know. Just cool Listen, people. I, I just, I blacked out for that entire thing. <laughs> um, so I don't remember any of it. Uh, but no, but um, yeah. I think this this album is like, it's sort of the, it's it's like a very different example of something that makes me feel better about the world that we live in and the way that yeah. the Muslims album did. Right. In nice. that it, it hearkened back. It was like, this album was like a nostalgic trip down memory lane to the golden age of hip hop when MCs were all about bars and bars. Um, I think uh, in the interview they mentioned that uh, Kanye referred to their their bars as God level, yeah, Whew. and uh, like God level rhyming, and um, I think that that's that's what this album is for me is it's like it's like a just a trip down memory lane to when you know to when hip hop was when I j- just discovered it and when I was listening to the classics Tribe uh yeah. Biggie Smalls Tupac um and 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 yeah and they they just did something really special and really cool on this album um yeah. to that effect for sure. Hunter, I know that your experience with uh, Abstract Mind State was through this show. So in in as quick as you can, what uh, what does this album represent for you? Because um, I know you have it yeah, in your top you know, as well. Yeah, uh, uh, just, just more of like, I guess, just the positive messages in the hip hop was very, st- mm-hmm. just stood out to me. It's just a breath of fresh air to like be spitting bars, as Jake was saying, um, in just a more positive light. So it kind of grounds you in, in making you feel good. Um, and I also, and um, uh, selfishly, oddly enough, I just love the record scratching. I just, lo- like, that brought a lot back right. for me, just hearing, like, like they mix in that mind state with the record scratching. And I'm all, I'm, I'm hooked on that stuff. So right. um, that bringing back that, that renaissance classic hip hop, uh, and it's also positive, nothing's better. So that's why I love it. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah, I couldn't agree more with what you guys have said already. For me, it's an absolute lock for top 10. Um, oh, yeah. And you guys were talking about be there. bars. And uh, with <laughs> bars, you know, I, I love you, Gree. You were an absolute joy to have on the show. And I think you're a dope rapper. But man, EP, when she comes, when she comes <laughs> on... With like a head full of steam, it just hits. It it's hits different. The she's got, she's got like a silky smooth delivery. That's just like, you want it really does. You you you, t- you said tribe already, Jake. But it's similar to how I feel with like, um, Q Tip and Fife Dog, with with uh, EP being the Fife Dog, where she comes in and it's like it brings a right. new energy. It brings a tempo that's different. Right. Um, that's a great and, great comparison. And they have that's and that's not to say anything about Q Tip or in this case Gree, because they need each other to be as good as they are, right? right. Um, because they they equal each other out. They bring that they, that yin and yang a bit. Um, but when EP comes in, there's multiple times in this album where I'm just like, oh my goodness, and uh, she does it. She does it uh, one of the best right now, I think, which is it's great to have them back in the industry. Like, it's it's awesome. Like, so, so psyched that we're getting more music from them. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, abstract mindset got to be in there. Lock. Absolute lock for top 10. Um, next one that we got on this list. Japanese breakfast. Jake, this Jay is a big Brecky. one for you. Yeah. JB. 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 The one and only JB in the music industry. Jabes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the one and only true JB. Yeah. Because when the I think JB, JB, I think PB and J. And that makes me think breakfast. And then I think Japanese yeah. breakfast. And right. um, I picked Japanese breakfast as my album of the year. Jubilee, my album of the yeah. year. One, you popped it because it is the album. It. I locked it in because it is the album that I listened to the most. 
<laughs> I thought you were just going to be like, because it is the album of the year. <laughs> Bec- uh, well, and I feel that it is. And I feel that it is. And here's why. Yeah. Because there was another question that you uh, kind of posed to the group in the group chat. And yeah. that was... Um, uh, 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 Who do you think has made the biggest statement in music in, in, in 2021? Right. Um, and what I thought about was Japanese breakfast immediately. Right. Um, and not just in music, but who has made the biggest statement in 2021 right. as a, as a music artist. And I thought about Japanese breakfast releasing Jubilee, um, publishing crying at H Mart, New York times bestseller novel. Yes. Um, the soundtrack for the video game Sable. Let's go. Uh, the yeah. the the Tonight Show performance that she self directed. That was a single shot. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's uh, it's totally just incredible. Yeah. Uh, directing most of her own music videos, especially for uh, uh, what's that song? Savage, Savage Boy, Savage. You know. Oh the yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Yeah, song. the music video yeah. for that. Is like conceptually so incredible. It's such a statement about the culture right now. Yeah. Um, and I think she just hits it on all bing, cylinders. Bing, for bing, me. bing, bong. Is it, yeah. bing, is it bing, bing, bong, Savage bing, bong. Good Boy? Savage Good Boy, right? Savage Good yeah. Boy. Yeah, that's Great that's song. the track. Okay. Uh, the the video for that is crazy and so good. Um, and so yeah, so for me, it's Japanese breakfast uh, bar none. Well, like you're missing. You're missing something. What? what went on tour with Luna Lee, Toronto, Ontario's Luna Lee, who's dope as well. I can't believe we haven't had her music on the show yet. Anyway, yes. Yeah. She had a hell of a year. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Um, and so, yeah, there's really just no, there's sort of no one else that kind of touches in terms of who's made the biggest statement. And for me, that's why Japanese breakfast is my number one choice. Right. Um, I also think that Jubilee is just like, it's a great escape. It's a, it's a triumph right. of sound. Um, and like I said, it just hits on all cylinders. I'm repeating myself. Right. It's just a great, great piece of music. For me, Japanese breakfast was my fourth pick. Um, and yeah, I agree with everything you're saying. She She had a crazy... 2021 like in terms of just shit that she accomplished like so cool um also had maybe my favorite song of 2021 uh or one of them anyways which was be sweet so good that song still slaps so incredibly hard um which was off of jubilee as well so um yeah absolute lock hunter what say you Um, it's not in my top, but it's still very good. Um, you know, I actually, uh, I was, I want, cause I can't play Sable on, uh, I don't have an Xbox, unfortunately, nor can my PC handle it. I do. I would, uh, you, (laughs) I envy you, but I have been watching gameplay for that game and, um, that made me fall in love with Japanese Breakfast. Um, it didn't make, it, it, it only, it's actually my number 11 um oddly enough but it's still like a fantastic album so right well we're, we're giving it the green circle then two two green top circle. three pin two top three finishes in, in a number 11 that's a green circle um for sure benny sings benny sings uh benny sings music uh so guys in december before lockdown in Ontario happened, this was our fir- this was our first episode. This, this was our the very first episode. first episode. This marks an important episode for us. In December, I, I got to see him live uh, here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Threw on a fantastic show. Um, also, surprisingly, what what instrument do you think he played? Well, you guys have seen the video, but all of them. <laughs> listener, what instrument do you think he played? He played a guitar the entire time, which I wasn't expecting because he he. Oh yeah. I thought he was going to play bass because he played bass throughout his career in another band where like a, a Dutch hip hop band. He was the bass player for that band. I thought, oh, he must play bass or like, you know, something like that. But he's on he's on a strat the entire time. Uh, anyway, this is all to say hmm. Benny Sings for me is probably my most listened to album of the year. Um, 
and it, and that's yeah, not there. to say it's not to say that it's the best album of the year because of that because it, it's not for me. I have it fifth here. Um, it's not the best album of the year in my opinion, but it is maybe the most listenable. And I'm what I mean by that is all circumstances Benny sings applies. When I'm feeling happy, sad, when I'm partying, when I'm chilling, I could listen to Benny sings. And yeah, uh, yeah I agree. And because of that, he's on a whole bunch of the time because it's just his song. His songs are so great. He also put out two albums this year. He put out uh, his second installment of the Beat Tape series that he done has done and music as well. So when you talk about busy people, you know, two albums and a world tour, not too shabby. He's he's also the one that um, the most people have said. I listen to Benny Sings now. Because, because of, of Servant Sonic. Sonic. A hundred percent. Yo, we have up, we have friends at, at school, Hunter and I, that have come up and said that to us. We're like, hey guys, yeah. like you actually put me on Benny Sings, and it's like dope. That's the whole point. Right? Let's so, go. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. I think it's for a lot of the reasons that you've said as well, that it's like um the vibes on on music are undeniable. They're undeniably like just good. Just good vibes. Some for everyone. You can put it on around people. Totally. Don't you're not gonna be embarrassed. No, no one's gonna be like, are you okay? Yeah. Dude? Yeah. Hundred percent. You can be like, yes and. <laughs> yes, I am okay. And. Yes and <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um Hunter, do you have so any this is a definite. That's a definite for you. Hunter, do you have any uh, so. any comments about um, oh, about Benny Sings in general? And you don't have to say it's a definite or not, you can just Okay. Um, comments, yeah, yeah, it's it's I, you know I uh, it's well, a definite first of all no. I'm glad yes I'm glad no. yeah well, I'm well I'm glad people um have found um that's cool that we've turned people on to uh, Benny Sings music you know I think there's a particular mood for Benny Sings um, mm-hmm. like you said in the summer in the sunlight um, it's genuinely <laughs> uh, it's not really my cup of tea that much <laughs> but. Uh, but at the same time, it's uh, you know it's not too bad. So Hunter, uh, Hunter doesn't get into the <laughs> sunlight very often. Yeah, Hunter, go to the, go sun to the like fucking sunlight, often. dude. Are you okay? Bro, I'm a pale ass dude. I'm a pale ass dude. Let me get you um, a tall glass of water and a and a sun <laughs> lamp. In the summertime, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're gonna have to go out to the patios and get me tanned because uh, I'm a pale person. Well, listener, don't listen to Hunter. It's a great album. So uh, <laughs> next, <laughs> next album we've got. Uh, moving along, Let's go. Canadian one, Toronto, Ontario, uh, PAX Take the Cake. Hunter, this is one that Boom. you brought. Yeah, this is one that you brought to the show. Can you tell me a little bit about PAX and why it belongs in the top yeah. 10? Yeah, PAX uh, Takes the Cake featured on the show. You know, I really liked it. First of all, fell in love with the cover. That's why I decided to give this a listen. It's like, I believe the, so, the artist's like a painting rendition covered up in, uh, in, all, the, in all the comforts of bed sheets and blankets. Um, it's got, you know, kind of this, just this indie like soundtrack. I I can't help but think of the movie Juno when I hear this album. It's just very (laughs) homey, kind of that, um, like this easy listening kind of indie rock, but it's also done like very quite well. Um, you know, and then Pax herself kind of like this crooning voice, kind of like this indie, a swampy, sloppy, falling down the stairs kind of approach to to the record. Everything's like loosey goosey, but but um, the very subtle hints. Uh, I think in one in the episode that we did the particular song, I don't have it with me unfortunately, but um, there's like this cool slide guitar. Her, the musicianship uh, or yeah, the musicians that she's that? with. Yeah, I gotta. I'm gonna try and f- uh, find it once I've said my piece here. Well, but, you go um, ahead. I'll, I'll find it for you. I think. I, yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, just I think just the, the the musicianship, the the character of her voice, uh, bonus fact, Canadian artist bringing it to the forefront, um, all those things for me uh, is the why I consider this album. I would put it in my top ten. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm with you on that. Um, I think the yeah. song you're talking about is Hangman. Am I right in saying? Thank that? you. Yeah, I think that is might it be it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I'm with you on that. This is one of my favorite Canadian albums of the year, uh, mm. especially especially rock albums. Um, oh, and yeah. shouts out to Pax too. Like they, I don't know if they are a band or if it's just her. or if it's just her. Yeah, I don't know what to call. Yeah, yeah. But either way, they went on like a European tour this year, 
which I don't know if they've done mm-hmm. that before. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that this is like kind of their biggest release. So um, if they haven't done that before, awesome. Like that's so sick that they're able to do that. If they have done it before, great to see them continuing do it, to do it. Um, but yeah, shouts out packs for sure on our list. You too, Jake. Great to hear. Um, so, uh, <laughs> um, why don't we get yes, into a song? Yeah. Why don't we get into a song yes. from, uh, Pax's album, take the cake. Uh, this song is called new TV. Enjoy it. Yes. And New TV. We move on. New, New TV. TV by Pax. Take the cake. A lock. I could really, I could really hear it. I could really hear what you guys were talking about. Yeah, totally. Uh, okay, that gives us three more artists that we need to consider three for more. this top ten. All right. First artist I want to bring to the forefront, and this is a favorite among us. This was unanimously in the top ten of all three of our lists. Motorbike James Visions from Edmonton, Alberta. Jake, that's right. This was your, <laughs> this was your uh, Mr. Your Swain the review Boxing. originally. Yeah, this was your review originally. Why is Motorbike James so important Hell to you this yeah. year? Oh fuck, buds. He's, uh, <laughs> you know, if anybody goes for a rip, it's Motorbike. He's Jay. ripping. Have you seen his social <laughs> media? Ripping. Dude's ripping. He actually rips literally rips every enough, day. Yeah. Almost <laughs> he. I, Almost every hour, there's like a new video he posts about just him ripping on some sort of, you know, he's like mud, on a quad mudder. Yeah, mudder. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's staying yeah. true to his bike, name. Then yeah. Yeah. a motorcycle. He's popping wheelies. He's in a motorboat yeah. sometimes. Yeah, um, yeah. I think like the thing about motorbike James that I really, really, really enjoy is um, I feel like he's me. You know, like he's like he's like if if I could make music really well, you would want to make what he makes. Well, no, I would make what he makes. Uh And I feel like but it's the same with you guys. Like if you guys were anybody else, you'd be Motorbike James. And I think that that's what it is with this album is this album is an album for the people. This is an album of the people. Uh, Motorbike James speaks to a, a part of all of us that just wants to go for a fucking rip. You know? That's it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. 
that's it for me. He's my he's my number four. He's my number two, Ooh. actually. He's my number yeah. four as well. Oh wow. Okay. So he's so that's he's a, a, that's a definite lock. That's spooky. Yeah, definite yeah, that's lock, a lock. Top four. five finish for Motorbike James. Um, Motorbike James. Uh, I'll just say I was listening. Yeah. Also, so the IKEA thing took longer to make than just one album, as I'm sure you, you would understand. <laughs> it's 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 a big task. It's an all day thing. Two album IKEA, two album deal. Yeah, it was like two and a half. So the second album two I listened to in full was Visions, and um, you want to know what I was thinking the entire time listening to it? I was like, is this guy the Canadian Tame Impala? Whoa, Ooh. right? Or like the Canadian. Yeah, I can see. I can see that in particular with. I can totally see that now. What was Tim and Paula's album before his last one? Uh, was Currents. it Ellicent? Yeah, Cur- it's Currents. Oh, yeah. Currents. Yeah, it's definitely got some currency vibes. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, not yeah. to be confused with the rapper that is not what I'm talking about, but Currents dash Y vibes. Um, right. Awesome. So that's a lock. We can say motorbike. James, I'll be honest, um, Jake. Um, I it was the songs you played to you played on the show that yes. got me to fall in love with. Uh, Thank you for bringing that up. James. Thank you for bringing that um, up. Common Sensei. I was saying earlier oh my that God. I was saying earlier <laughs> yeah. that "Be Sweet" is one of my favorite songs of the year, if not my favorite. The only one that I think stands in its way is is Common Sensei. I think it's my favorite yeah. song of the year. And you know yeah, what I think and- it is with Common Sensei though. Yeah. Does anybody else get this vibe with when, when that little bass line that biddle diddle 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 that bass line comes in of like a bit of a Kanye thing happening? Hmm. I've never you see I uh, I've never heard I've never heard that personally, but I I mean I'll I'll listen to it. Well, I'll listen for it. It was listen it was um listen back it was, let me know. It was me roll um, you know the well. Also, well, I gotta speak on common sense as well. But me roll. You know, like that. Is that a, is that solo at the end of the song where he's just going ham at the end there? I don't. Me roll is the me roll is it like. Yeah, 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 yeah. That fucking that like that solo is hook was freaking amazing. And then I can't help but hear like a very. This is gonna be niche for some fans, but like. John Frusciante does a lot of that style of guitar. Okay, yeah, in yeah, Common yeah. Sensei. yeah. And so when he does that yeah. wailing guitar, um, I couldn't help but think of that, and I was instantly hooked. I was like, "All right, well, Motorbike James is fantastic." So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he's deep. He's he's deeply rooted in yeah in yeah. Alberta uh, music. Damn. So. Well, because he's yeah. he's been in some bands from previous from mm. from the past that. Uh, right. So he's he's a he's an OG. He's a local for sure. All three we of love us motorbike have to go to James a motorbike James concert. Yeah, we gotta go. We gotta, That's we gotta what go we should do. Him. Motorbike James, check your DMs. Uh, motorbike James, <laughs> yeah, next yeah, guest uh, on the show. We, we put you go. up maybe seven or eight times. Please reply. <laughs> um, okay, uh, next one. Next one we've got okay. here on the list. Motorbike James, we got. Okay. Um, next one we've got bad, bad, not goods. Talk memory. Now this was a uh, this was a bite sized. I did. Uh, very good. I want to say like. October, um, but yeah, it, it represents uh, it represents the fifth album for Bad Bad Not Good and the first without Maddie, um, as he's now known professionally. Um, right, Bad Bad Not Good. Why this album is a ten for me? I put it in. Where is it for me? It's number eight on my list. Um, this to me, I mean, I have the. It's probably not in the shot here, but I have the vinyl right behind me. Um, and I think what we're seeing from Bad Bad Not Good on this record and in their career now is a step towards, um, carving their own sound out, carving a path for what they potentially could sound like for the next, you know, five, 10 years, um, or the next however many projects, um, with, with Bad Bad Not Good in the past, not to say that their music isn't something that I I've enjoyed in the past. Cause that would be untrue. I, I really, really like bad, bad, not goods earlier stuff. And yeah. s- still, if I was to like, look at all of like the whole catalog, I still might gravitate towards some of that stuff to listen to first. But I think talk memory actually represents their most impressive output in one project. And why I say that is because I think it is free of like maybe some of the expectations that some of their other albums have had, um, mm. just to, just a reminder of how bad, bad, not good started. They were like a YouTube 
sensation when they played like odd future covers, like jazz covers of odd future tracks. Um, they got really big. Tyler, the creator, like retweeted them or something like that. And the rest is history sort of thing. So I think for a good chunk of their early years, they were really dedicated towards like being hip hop adjacent all the time, always. And that's awesome because I love that genre and I love a lot of the music that they created in, the, in that time. But in talk memory, sure, there's hints of hip hop here and there, but it is like so far away from hip hop compared to some of their other stuff that I think they're really right. finding themselves. And I think they're really um, they're really like navigating what their sound is a little bit better than they ever have. <clears throat> so to me, talk memory represents one of the best Canadian bands in the world right now coming into their own. And, uh, and it's just like, so awesome to throw that album on and just like close your eyes too. Um, it's, yeah. it's really, it, it really takes you for a ride. So yeah, um, that's very true. Love bad, bad, not good stock memory. Um, as I'm talking, I could convince myself to put it even higher on my list. Um, but, what do you have uh, it at? Yeah. What do you have it at? I have it, I have it at eight, but I could definitely mm. see myself blasting you it up. It so, um, I anyway, have it at that's eight bad, bad, as well. There you go. That is at my 10. That is at, that is at 10 for me. I'd probably bump right. that up actually. Yeah. So an easy lock, easy lock for bad, bad, not good. Any, any comments from you guys on bad, bad, not good at all or. Um, just, I like the longer songs and very cinematic, actually. I found it being yeah. a very cinematic record to, uh, to read to. I, I would read a lot to this record mm. just because I love the ambience that they would interplay with, along with the musicality that they're, they're brilliant. So, yeah. Yeah. I would really like say it. your cinematic thing is 110% on point. If you've seen yeah. any of their, uh, and listeners as well, if you've seen any of their music videos for this album, they're Oof. just they're described yes. as that. Yes. They're all like cinematic. Yes. The first one I can't remember what which song it is for now, but it's essentially just like a ten minute short film. Ten minute. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it's exactly that. Hunter, you're, you're spot on. Any anything you want to add there, Jake? Um, just yeah, I totally agree with everything you guys have both said, and um, they're they're probably, if not the only one of the only instrumental bands. Yes that I listen to with like regularity. Right. Like once a week I'll be throwing it on. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I agree that they really are one of Canada's best bands coming into their own. Yeah. And just, I, I would feel shitty looking back on this episode and not mentioning it. I don't, for any like hardcore jazz fans that listen to our show, like this album has Arthur Verakai on it. That dude is a fucking living legend. Like, you need to, at minimum, appreciate that this guy is sprinkled in in this album, and that just makes it so awesome to um, to listen to as well. So, maybe hey, absolute luck, absolute luck, lock it in. Which brings us to our last one, which people would argue is the best album of the year, um, and uh, they would be right. Ooh, it's a doozy. Um, <laughs> um, Mustafa's. When Smoke Rises, Mustafa, Toronto, Ontario, Regent Park, uh, where I got my humble beginnings in the radio world. Um, Yo. When Smoke Rises, a concept album dedicated to Smoke Dog, um, his, uh, his friend that unfortunately passed away um, due to gang violence. Um, what to me, I, I still, I still struggle talking about this album in this setting, like in a, in a setting where we're like judging it, because it's like, sure. um, it's like so, it's like obviously so personal to to Mustafa, but it's yeah. like such a like a I think a conversation that in Toronto specifically in Canada for whatever reason gets to avoid when you look at our like neighbors to the south inner city struggles for young black kids like that conversation is you know there and present about like um the hardships and for whatever reason like people in canada still think that you know black lives matter is only a thing in the states it's not a thing here in Canada. Sure, yeah. And it's not a thing no, here in true. Toronto. Like, oh, Toronto's like such a safe city. And yeah, it is. It's a safe city 
in some ways for some people, but for a group of people in a couple specific areas of Toronto, it's not, it's extremely unsafe um, and very dangerous and like devastating. And I think that Mustafa puts this into maybe the most perfect way I've ever heard it specifically for this community, for, for Toronto, Ontario, he puts it into a way that I, I can't imagine a better way of being able to present the information uh, to people who maybe have never really realized it before or, or people that fully realize it and just need to know that they're um, they've got, you know, this, this incredibly intelligent kid um, with them and, and on their side. Um, anyway, so for me, it represents an album that what you guys were saying earlier, um, what makes an album mm. of the year, this to me, you have it on vinyl, right? You have it on vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It was yeah, gifted yeah. to me for my birthday. One of my, one of my nice. favorite gifts I've had in a long time. And, uh, what this album represents to me when you're saying album of the year, it transcends time. It has nothing to do with 2021. This is like one of Canada's best albums ever. Um, mm -hmm. this is one of the best products to be released from Toronto, uh, because it is so ingrained with Toronto, um, and the real life hardships that this person and others, uh, he cares about have experienced. Um, and like, because of that, how could it not be my top album of the year a little bit from where I'm sitting, my perspective, um, and he went and he had a performance, uh, he had a performance at, um, at, uh, Massey, Massey Hall. Um, oh man. And, uh, to talk a little bit more about like how much, how profound this, this, uh, whole experience around when smoke rises is for the performance he was wearing. Um, like I'm, you know, I'm going to kind of butcher this and I feel bad about this, but he was wearing like a full, like, I guess like Muslim robe and, yeah. um, he, which he does all the, all the time when he performs. But on top of that, he was wearing a uh, bulletproof vest and, um, just the message that that sends, like the, the conversation around that in and of itself is, is pretty, pretty wild. Uh, and by all accounts, I was really bummed. I couldn't go, but by all accounts, uh, it was an incredible show as well. So, you know, this, this inner city kid from Toronto, you know, releases his first studio album, and within the same year, he's performing at Massey Hall, one of the most uh, incredible venues in our country. So, yeah, um, you know, incredible, incredible year, incredible album. My favorite of the year. Um, what What do you guys have to say about this? I'll say, um, you know, Leah, what you what you just said. I, you know, I think the questions that you asked early in the group chat of, well, you know, what does it have to say? Well, it talks about the gun violence in Toronto and the poverty about that. It's personal. It's a Toronto story. It's personal about Canada. It's personal. The uh, frankly, the producing, um, the production on this record is absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's got a personal message and in like a very intimate, heartfelt message. Um, of 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 an artist who's lost a friend, um, so that's why this is this is just right behind. Um, this is a number two for me. Uh, it's brilliant. Um, honestly, if unto others hadn't come out, it would have been my 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 that would have been my number one. And I'm not trying to disrespect Mustafa. It's just all about preference for me. But um, uh, and 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 again, like uh, if I'm talking about the show, and, and I'm grateful for my co-hosts here, it's you know um, about the depth of um, of both of these guys' musical knowledge that they've uh, introduced to me. Whether it's the Muslims or if it's Child, Motorbike James, and with Lee uh, bringing Mustafa, um, that was just something that I never heard before, and it's uh, it's it's frankly it's brilliant. Um, so yeah, uh, just, uh, genuine respect and I have a lot of love for this album. Yeah. Anything to add there? Um, I don't know if I have that much to add. I just, I totally agree with everything you said. And, and in particular that this album does also hit on all of the, the things that I think about when I think about like the best album of the year or mm. who's made the biggest impact, like all those questions. Um, I think the reason for me, it's my number three and, 
honestly, part of the reason that it, it is a little bit lower for me is like I have a hard time actually listening to this album mm, for those 100%. the reasons that I generally look for in music is like is it personal? Is it world building? Is is it conceptual? Like it, this album totally is all of those things, but it's almost too real. It's too it's for me. Just for it, it is. It's totally yeah. devastating. And um, so, you know, other than like, if I'm if I have time to carve out to listen to this album and then feel really upset for a bit. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, totally. Like I like then, as I was saying, I have the the vinyl. Yeah, I have the vinyl, and I've played it twice. Maybe it's like one of my favorite gifts yeah. I've had in a long time. I played it twice, um, right? Because it's yeah, it's um, it's heavy. It's extremely heavy, it's and heavy. maybe yeah, maybe that's um, I don't know. Maybe we can talk about <laughs> you know if that makes it better or worse or whatever. Well, but, and. I, yeah. Well, and I think that that's because we were sort of talking about like, what is the value of us ranking music? Like, what is the yeah, right. what does that add to the value of the music itself, or what does it take away to give something like a lower rating? Mm-hmm. And I think this is one of, the, and you actually said it sort of in the intro to this whole thing, Lee, is that uh, you have a hard time thinking about this album as like something that you could rate, mm. um, yeah, because. Artistically, this this point. could very well be the the album of the year, right? Um, but regardless of all of that, like regardless of how we qualify it, mm-hmm. there's something like uh, profoundly meaningful about writing an album about a friend who passed due to gun violence, right? That's profound, mm. not for any of us. Like, yes, for us, but, like, more than anybody else for Mustafa. Exactly, yeah. And so for us to and be people, like, Ooh, And people good. like him, right? Like, that's the thing. Exactly. It's like, this album is about personal experience, obviously, but it's speaking to a body of people very directly. Right, um, right, right, right. And, like, yeah. Like, how, when you get so targeted like that, and, and it, it, it's done so well, where it's, like, so genuine, so, like, authentic authentic yeah how do you um yeah you're exactly right how do you how do you rate it and it's uh, that's kind of the practice of lots of these albums though like we could say that about yeah any number of these right um so maybe that's kind of the fun of it that's also maybe the challenge of it that's also like kind of the like this is bullshit of it (laughs) yeah i mean futility (laughs) yeah exactly like this is this is at the end of the day always going to be you know what you said hunter personal preference so Mm -hmm. like like at the end of the day it, it's it's a little bit of that, which all these lists are, right? Oh like, yeah, who are we? Who are we to say? <laughs> yeah, because Hun- uh, yeah, not yeah, Hunter, yeah. sorry, um, Mustafa. Um, I think he, he, maybe I'm lying, but I'm pretty sure he topped the CBC's list. Yeah, no, he was definitely at the top of a bunch of lists. Yeah, he was everywhere. Yeah, I right? saw yeah. a bunch of ratings that put him on top. He was everywhere, but he didn't win the Polaris, and the person who did win the Polaris isn't even in our list and like yeah you know it's, it's just like yeah that's why like these lists are ridiculous which is maybe more the point i'm trying to make about mustafa is fuck whatever the rating was like fuck being album of the year in terms of just like pure importance this is going to go down in history as one of the most important canadian albums of of minimum my lifetime i would mm-hmm imagine ever uh because it's it's talking about something in greater detail than maybe ever before at a scale and and like a quality that we've never seen before um which is violence in toronto like violence against black people in toronto um and that's uh, a message that needs to continue and uh yeah he does it he does it at a an elite all-time level so that's that's what I'll say about Mustafa. Um, anyway, so that, so I think we can say absolute lock about Mustafa as well. So guys, um, you want to know what? <laughs> hey, you want to know what? They all make it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. Then they do. They They're do. all top ten. All twelve of them are top ten. 
This is our top ten. It's twelve songs. Right. Yeah. That's the, and we're not going to debate. That's the shtick. That's the shtick every year. Yeah. Is we we say there's going to be a top something and we add more. <laughs> and then we just add That'll more. That'll be the shtick. Yeah. God. Yeah. Um, and we don't place any of them that specifically. Yeah. Exactly. There's no ranking whatsoever. Um, but yeah, no. I uh, this is this episode was like obviously fun just to go back and think about the music of of last year. I'm ex- really excited mm-hmm. for this year's music. There's already a lot of speculation on what's going to come out this year. Yep. Um, I don't know if you guys have anything you're super excited about, but I know uh, like The Weeknd, for instance, he has his album coming. What day is it today? Wednesday, right? The Weeknd has uh, his album coming out it's, this week. Uh, yeah, so, it's coming out right. soon. Yeah. Quincy Jones is supposed to be on that in some way or another, which is oh, really crazy. exciting. Uh, one, one oh, tricks point never. Um, I know you're a big fan of theirs, Jake, uh, is also on it in some capacity, which they've collaborated in the past. But anyway, so we're, all I'm saying is we're, we're already full steam ahead into the next year of music, which I will speak for all of us saying that we cannot wait to enjoy with all of you listeners in the form of our new reviews to come, to come this year. So indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me, let me conclude it with this. Where do you guys see Canada's music going? Do you see it pushing further past um, or maybe getting more involved with maybe the issues uh, like Mustafa? Like, what, what, are you guys excited for the future? Um, what, like, what, what do we think is going to happen? Is there any predictions from you guys of Canadian music going forward? Yeah, I think, um, listen, I think Bare Naked Ladies, big comeback in the works. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to come back yeah. in a big way. Yeah, big come. Uh, Michael big come, Bare Naked Ladies. Next album, big come. It's going <laughs> to be amazing. Comes, Get yeah. big come back. Sorry. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, yes, and um, Nickelback. Um, I love their song. Nickelback with, and Arcade Fire are going to collab. Yeah, I yeah. love Nickelback's song <laughs> with arms wide open. Still to this day. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh um oh. Sean Desmond. Oh shit! Yeah. Hey Sean, you missed a Desmond. So anyway, um, that's sick. Yeah, a bunch of Canadian Canadian artists are gonna be. You no, know, to answer your your question more seriously, we 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 kind of put in the group chat as well. Um, you know, is this is this one of the greatest years for Canadian music in recent mm, memory? Mm. And how I will respond to your question is by answering that one, which is. Yes, it is one of the greatest years for Canadian music in recent memory. And that's got me really excited for where Canadian music is going. We've talked about Mustafa a lot already, but yes, I I do think there's going to be other artists that feel empowered and now bold enough to talk about their experience. I mean, we, we talked a bunch of, about a bunch of artists that have done that in various different ways on um, the show already. Like when we had the uh, indigenous month, special we talked about prado who does that in in her way we talked about nick ferrio who's like a big advocate for that as well you talked about the hallucination which put out an album this year as well um and maybe it there's a a folk artist or some other genre artist um in other marginalized groups out there that uh, is hearing all these artists be brave and i think it's a matter of time before we get the next great um like the mustafa or whoever um, so I think that's definitely one piece. I think another piece we already kind of talked about with Charlotte Day Wilson is R and B is not going away in in Canada. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, for sure. And if anything, it's just like morphing and continuing to mutate into other like really fun and exciting subgenres. Like I don't think K is uh, is out of that genre at all. I think he's he's definitely you know kind of linked to that. We talked about Child. I think is definitely linked to that. Child. Um, mm-hmm. just creating all these little subgenres and all this fun stuff that way. So, um, that's what I see with Canadian music is, is more innovation, more experimentation and, uh, more awesome music. So, yeah. Awesome. Great. There you go. Well, let's, uh, let's call it there folks. It was fantastic to spend time with you every week ish, roughly, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, in 2021. Um, we'll try our absolute hardest to be more consistent with getting episodes out, but we're, we're all, we're growing boys and we're, uh, we're in school. So growing uh, boys in school, we got, we got stuff sometimes to do, but we're, we're, we love, uh, getting together and talking about our favorite music and it, it genuinely 
improves my life um, to get music from you guys and to hear your episodes and um, to hear the albums that you are psyched about. And uh, I know for a hundred percent, at least one of my episodes improved a bunch of people's lives because they listen to Benny sings things. So uh, there you go, there you go. Yeah, so shout out to the fans. Um, maybe we'll just do like two songs back to back to end the show because I really wanted to play two. Um, let's start with uh, maybe a more upbeat one, and then we'll end with Mustafa. So the songs that you're gonna hear back to back here, uh, you're gonna get. Um, what was the song that I wanted to play from uh, Motorbike James? Is I is it I Know You? Is that the one? Oh, um, or is it... It's not uh, uh, Friend? Oh, no, Henlo Friend. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Henlo Friend. Friend. Yes, yeah. yeah, so the first Henlo one I want to play, Motorbike James, Henlo Friend, and then we'll end with Air Forces by Mustafa for the unofficial last episode of 2021 coming to you in 2022. Uh, And we'll see you guys for the next one, which will be our first official episode of 2022, where we start talking about new music released this year. As always, thanks for tuning in. Follow us on social media. You can find us at at Servin Sonic, not Surfin, Servin. Servin, Servin, like we're serving you this Sonic. Um, At Servin Sonic on both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Hit us up in the DMs if you have an album you want us to review. Uh, and please go like, subscribe, share whatever it is, the action that the social media is telling you to do on uh, the various different platforms that we're on. Um, if you give us a review and rating on Apple, it helps us out a lot. We get to crush that algorithm, you know what I mean? So uh, it helps us kind of break the mold there and, and get to hire on different random lists that Apple has. So please do that. And I think you can do that on Spotify now. I don't know. I don't use Spotify, but I think you can. So if you can rate and review on Spotify, do that as well. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, I think we're less than 50 listens away from 1,000, um, which I think we're going to get with this Great. episode. Let's go. So well, shout out. everyone for. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Shouts out to you guys for doing that. Listen to us chat um, when Definitely. we're mere minutes away from Jake having to eat dinner. So thank you so much for Have that. Have a dinner party. Um, okay. Any, any messages you want for uh, the people of 2021? Uh, fuck. Like, greetings from the past. Yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, like, it's different year, eh? back here. Can't wait to get there. Yeah, you know? can't wait to see you there. Yeah. 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 And with that, I say yes and. Yes and.
Just know there should be music playing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I know, I'm going to leave now. Okay, sounds good. All right.